Hey everybody, Jared of Second Life Design. Um, one of the more common questions I get on my uh, through Instagram is where do I get my logs and how much do I pay for them? Um, try, I'm gonna try not to ramble too much. There's it's kind of a multi-part question and multi and many part answer. So we'll just kind of give my thoughts and kind of my reasonings behind things and maybe it'll help you. I think there's gonna be a lot of variance depending on your region and what's available to you. Um, that's gonna be what um, it's gonna dictate what logs are available to you as a someone who's gonna mill and get logs, slab things, whatever. So um, many people may know or may not, I'm in central Illinois in Champaign County. Um, it's mainly a river bottom land. There are a lot of hickories, a lot of cottonwoods, a lot of ash trees, a lot of silver maples. Um, a lot of oak trees, a lot of red oak trees, some white oak, um, a few walnuts here and there. Uh, that's that's mainly what I'm looking at. There are some softwoods around. I don't really mess with them. Uh, it's not really my interest, but there are trees out there. Um, it's a lot of farmland, but there are trees and little pockets. There's plenty available to me. Um, I, generally, I, I work with tree services. Um, it kind of it's kind of a benefit to the tree services to drop the logs off or to you know to relocate the logs to someone who's slabbing. It's the, the tree services are just removing it all. They're charging their customer for it. They can maybe sell the firewood. They can do if they want to mess with that. Some don't even care. They just throw it all to the you know, recycling pile. The big log sections are just big and heavy and they're harder to handle. If they can find more times than not, if they can find someone to take those, they're going to be happy to do it. If they're going to, that's what my experience has been. Um, they will, if they have the means, they will load them onto a trailer they will help you however possible. They do not want the logs, they don't want anything to do with them. They're big and heavy and in the way, and it's one more thing they have to remove. So by and large, it's a benefit to work with tree services, getting good with them. Um, the flip side of that is you have to be ready to strike whenever they are. It's on their schedule, not yours. Um, they're gonna be taking a tree down on Wednesday. That tree will be down by the end of the day, typically is when they're ready to take the log down. And you gotta be ready to go or have a way of doing it, have a way of picking it up, whatever. I, I don't know. That's, so that's what's going to be the variance. It's gonna, you're going to have to get creative in that. Um, my biggest advice would be don't be a hindrance to them. Don't be demanding. You can't really be too selective. Um, in our area, there's a lot of ash trees coming down. They're all infected by the ash borer. Um, the ash trees are coming down left and right. I turn down more ash trees than I take because there's just so many of them, I couldn't go through it. Ash is a really pretty wood, but there's just so, only so much you can get, and I just don't need that much. Um, so I'll take very straight ones or very wide ones. That's kind of where I'm at at this point. Um, I've worked in the tree service I work with. They kind of know that. I've worked with them long enough where they know that I'm only looking for certain ones. They'll send me pictures of trees before they start taking them down so they can kind of plan their day. And it's that working relationship that's going to help with that. Um, you know, there's going to be times when you may get something from a tree service that you may don't want so much. It's going to be the, um, you know, I don't really care for it, but I'll, they're helping me out and they'll remember, that I, you know, they can get me logs and they'll, it'll help them. And they'll, you may not get it one time, but you'll get it, you'll, when they drop off a whole walnut tree, it will, you know, pay itself off in spades. So that's, you know, working with them is going to be the biggest thing. I also find social media really helpful. Um, Instagram's great for kind of the worldwide reach, the countrywide reach, whatever, but Facebook, uh, by and large, is better for um, localized things. If you put on the marketplace, you know, search on the, mar uh, on the marketplace for free logs, free firewood, whatever, you'd be amazed what's out there that people just, again, the logs are so, so big and damn heavy that nobody wants to mess with them. If you have the means to go slab them, to go move them, whatever, you can get a lot of free logs and not really mess with them. You know, and just go get the logs and you're gonna have plenty to do and that can keep you busy uh, for a while. So um, using the social media to your advantage can be really beneficial. Posting a lot of pictures can help. Um, by and large, there's not a lot of people just in my area that are slabbing or have an interest in it, whatever. So once you kind of become known as the slab guy or you're taking logs in or whatever, people will keep you in mind. And they'll say, hey, I'm taking this tree down. Would you be interested in it? I'll talk to the service, tree service and they can just leave it. So there's definitely different avenues to that. Um, again, it's going to vary by your region. If you're looking for, for very specific trees, it's going to be harder to find. If you're looking for you know, build an inventory of slabs and have different trees around, that's going to, you know, be helpful to your services. If you're, what's available in Texas, I don't know. What's available here, that's what I have available to me. So it's all going to kind of vary, but 
there's a few different things out there that, you know, working with the tree services, getting in good with them. And that's going to be your biggest avenue. They, they take trees down all day, every day. They know where the logs are at and they know what's coming down and that they could care less about them. Um, very, very, um, very rarely does a tree service keep the logs. If they do, they're, they're selling them to a specific buyer and they're a veneer grade tree and whatever. And more times than not, they just want to get rid of them. They don't want anything to do with them. Next question. Do I pay for logs? By and large, I do not pay for logs. Um, if someone were to have a cow that was going to die and they said, Hey, you're a butcher. You can have this cow. Um, I want you to pay me for it, but there's a lot of hamburger there. You can have it though. Or you can buy it from me. Well, that's great. There is a lot of hamburger in that cow, but it's, it's still a lot of work to get there. And there's plenty of other ones out there that it doesn't really matter. So the analogy is getting kind of convoluted, but my point is like the tree is a hindrance to a property owner. They just, they're looking to someone to buy it so they can offset their cost. That's fine. As a small business owner, I cannot afford to do that. I can't pay for every tree that's out there because from the time I get that tree until it's sold as a piece, it's going to be two, three, four years. You can't sit on that money all, all the time. It just does not happen. So it's very rare that I will pay for logs. Um, I will pay for walnut trees if they're really straight, really clear, and I can, you know, I'm, I'm sure they're going to be good quality. I will uh, pay for pay for logs, pay for trees, but by and large, I haven't really had a need to, and I just it's just something I just don't do. Um, if someone's going to load it for me on a trailer or drop it off my house, definitely we can we can work something out. If someone has a really big tree and they say, hey, you know, make me a dining table. If you make something out of it, you know, cut me a break on it. Absolutely, do those deals all day long. But I, it's very rare that I'm exchanging hard cash for a tree um, for the material. Um, if I got to rent a trailer to go get it, you know, I'm, you know, it's, there's just a lot of costs to get wrapped up in milling, um, and processing costs that just, if you were to front all that, you'd be sitting on money forever and you may not ever see it back. So it's just, um, and that's before you even open the tree up to find that it may be rotten, may have barbed wire in it or bolts, nails, bullets, whatever. So by and large, I do not pay for, pay for logs. There are too many of them out there that are free. Um, that's just kind of where I'm at. It may be different in your territory. If there's a lot of people out there that are billing and a lot of, a lot of lumber processors, they may be pretty competitive. You know, the tree services may work, may go to them directly to offset their costs. So you, it's just going to matter. It's going to vary on your region one to the other. So um, I'm very upfront with people about it. I tell them what, I, you know, what I'm going to do with it, what I'm going to sell them for, you know, as the finished pieces. But I also tell them how much work it is to get to that finished state, how long these things are gonna be sitting in my driveway or in my backyard drying and how much it takes to get them there and how much you aren't, there's not really that much material there. You know, it's, they see a big log, but I see four, maybe five slabs. And that's, you know, and how much is that gonna, how much of those gonna shrink down? Are they gonna crack? Whatever. So I'm just really upfront and honest with people and that's that, that's been working really well for me. So um, I don't want to get too rambly in this. I don't know if this helps people. I do get a lot of questions on where, you know, log acquisition. Where do I get it and how much do you pay and whatever. There's a lot of different variables in it. That's this is what works for me in my part of the country. Uh, kind of maybe apply that to your area and see what's out there. So um, any other comments, leave them below. Any other questions, leave them below. Hit the like and, co and subscribe buttons. Those really help me. The page is taken off, the YouTube channel is taken off, so I want to try and build that. If you want to see something else, please let me know. Any other questions or comments, find me on Instagram at Second Life Design, and thank you.